Pastor Chooks, along with his wife, Pastor Toyin, are the lead pastors of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg, South Africa. Through them, God is raising an army of ordinary men and women who are transforming and uplifting the standard of life in their communities through understanding and applying biblical principles. Pastor Chooks and Pastor Toyin frequently host workshops, seminars and conferences for transformation and uplifting of the complete man, complete woman and wholesome families. Some of the events and programs include the Dream Achievers Seminars and Conferences, Kingdom Financiers Conferences, Marriage Enrichment Courses and Seminars, For Wives Only Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camps, Limitless Men's Seminars. They are also the founders of the Power of Women Academy, a group mentorship for high-impact women. They also host the annual Power of Women Conferences and Events. For more information, please visit www.idelight.co.za and www.reslife.org.za or WhatsApp plus 27 814 Good morning, saints. Welcome to this uh, beautiful Sunday morning. It is indeed an uh, exciting Sunday morning. God is doing a quick work. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew uh, 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen want to pray uh, that we'd become effective disciples. Hallelujah. We are be effective witnesses, effective disciples. Prayer point number one, we pray for humility that we ourselves uh, would be discipled. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Masi kratobo shikraba la bride le bazi graba ba ribo shete le brada la baraga da rebe riba raba riba raba riba marobo shikre do le brada le braga de rebe sikra de le brado zikaraba mali brodo so do reba la brada le ba la braga de reba shanda raba mali brodo sikre de ba so gro de reba shanda reba la brada raba rekozi brada si brada la brada raba shada raba li brada le ba riko de de brada le brada la brada le ada raba shada raba le brada ada raba ribo si crede si crede le ba le brada le brada ba raba raba ba raba ra ribo si crede le ba raba le brada le le ba raba riba le brada le le i raba shada raba la brada raba 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 ria ba raba ria ba raba shanda raba hallelujah amen amen want to pray for passion for people and passion for souls hallelujah Jesus had a passion for people. Yeah, uh, whenever he, he would go in and the crowds were following, he had compassion for them. He, he saw them as you know, people without a shepherd, without a leader. So we pray that we may also have a passion to, for souls, for people who are lost in the world. Hallelujah. Let's do the Father's work. Let's pray. Ma si kradi pu si krada la brade de ba shanda raba i krada raba shanda raba 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 ria ba raba raba ria ba raba ria ba raba i krada raba ria ba raba ria ba raba ria ba raba 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 ria ba raba ria ba raba mi krada raba sabra da le braya de raba raba le braya le ba raba shi le ba raba 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 i zada ba raba liya ba raba liya ba raba liya ba raba liya da 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 ba ya da raba liya ba raba ma si kro do si gra ba le bra di si gra di le ba re bo shi te le bra da sa da re ba la bra de re ba shan da re ba li bra ya da raba i gra de re ba shan da re ba liya ba raba liya ba raba liya ba ri ba raba liya ba ri ba di ra ba raba liya da raba a re ba liya ba ri ba raba liya ba ri ba liya ba ri ba liya ba raba liya ba raba alleluia amen want to pray for speed in influencing and bringing more people into the kingdom. May the Lord give us speed. May the Lord give us uh, ingenuity. May you give us uh, 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 wisdom in how to bring in the harvest with speed. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Masikra di bosikra de lebra de lebra da da da. 
Makare bali brodo so krode de bashada rabali brada raba bradi si krede bari bara 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 bashada raba raba ya bereba makari bara 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 ya bere bara bali brade de bashada rabali brade de de igra da raba raba riba ya do ribali brade de bara 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 ya bara bara ya de ripa raba raba ya bara bara ya bara bara ya bara bara ya bara 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 ya bara bara ya bara bara Raga de raga di 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 burro bodi ya barra bari ya bere barra bari ya bere bari ya bere ba. Alleluia. We want to pray for wisdom in how to speak to people's hearts, uh, how to be relevant in our in our messaging. Hallelujah. That we may attract people to to the house of God, and that we may uh, be able to 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 show them Christ in our conduct in our message. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Rabba shata rabe li brade sigre di bo sigra du si brada la ba. Rebo shede re masa da rabba li brade re ba shada rabba li brada rabba. Maga di re basa brada li brade re mande re ba re ba shada rabba le abria da rabba. Ma li brada re 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 be re be re ya be re be re ya ba rabba shada rabba li bra ya da rabba ri ya be re ba. Ma ka da rabba li brada re ba shede re ba ri ya ba rabba rabba ri ya be re ba. Ma li bro do sigra da rabba li ya ba rabba ri ya be re be ri ya be re be ri ya be re be ri ya be re ba. Li brada re be re ba re be ri ya ba ra ba ri ya be re ba ra ba ra ba ri ya be ra ba ri ya ba ra ba ri ya ba ra ba. Amen, amen. My last prayer point. We want to pray that we'll tap into the supernatural power of God to accelerate the work of bringing the lost into the kingdom. May God show us new ways and how to use technology and grace together for speed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Masi gradu si graba la branda reka libra hande rebo shi brada. Ribo so gro de leba ramanda reba libra de leba si gra de leba. Egre de bo si gra de leba remanda reba la brea da rabaria barabaria beriba. Rabasha da rabaria barabaria beriba rabaria barabaria beriba. Robo shi de leba riba la brea da rabaria beriberia barabaria barabara barabaria da rabaria beriba. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, saints, for praying along with me. My name is Pastor Dumi, and uh, don't forget to be a witness, a, a faithful witness. Hallelujah. Do share this broadcast with everyone you know. Like us on Facebook, follow us uh, on YouTube, and subscribe to our channel. Hallelujah. Bless you. Please join me for the confessions. God has made me a great nation and made my name great. I am blessed above all people, and I am a blessing. I cannot be barren in my body or in the works of my hand. I rejoice in all I put my hand to, because God has blessed me greatly. The work of my hands prospers exceedingly, and I am fulfilled. I am the head and not the tail. I'm always above and never beneath, as I observe and do all that the Lord commands me. I seek the Lord, and he makes me prosperous. I obey and serve God. I spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. The Lord is my shepherd. I cannot want. I am walking in abundance. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in season. My leaf does not wither, and everything that I do prospers abundantly. God has brought me forth with silver and gold. The Lord has increased me more and more, me and my children. Peace is within my walls and prosperity in my home. The blessings of God abound in my home and in my life. Blessings are upon my head. My memory is blessed. My imagination is blessed. My mind is blessed. And my will is lined up with the will of God. I owe no man nothing but to love them. I create a surplus supply of resources and provision for every area of my life in Jesus' name. I'm blessed when I rise, I'm blessed when I sleep, I'm blessed when I come in, I'm blessed when I go out. I declare that I have plenty at all times and in every place. I declare that I'm prospering and I'm in good health, even as my soul prospers. 
I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. I declare according to the word of God that with long life he has satisfied me and has shown me his salvation. I declare that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives and dwells in me and therefore he quickens and gives the life of God to my physical body. Jehovah is my God that heals me. Jesus himself took away all my infirmities and bore my diseases on his body on the cross. Therefore, I am completely healed, whole, and perfect in health. My soul blesses the Lord, and all that is within me blesses his holy name. I do not forget any of his benefits. He forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction. He crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. I remain confident of this, that I am seeing the goodness of God in the land of the living. God has given me abundant life. And I receive that life through his word. And that life flows to every organ and tissue of my body, bringing life and health to me. No evil can befall me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For God has given his angels charge over me. They keep me in, in all my ways. Thank you for joining me for Confessions. You Keep on saying the confessions and they will bring a new season in your life. A warm, warm welcome to you this Sunday morning. We're indeed very glad to have you and to be on live online this morning for our Sunday morning service. Wherever you are joining us from, we're indeed very, very glad to have you. We're going to have a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. Bible says wherever we are gathered in the presence of the Lord, He is there in our midst. Wherever two or three are gathered, He is there in our midst. So wherever you are in your family, I mean with your family members, please all come together and be part of today's service. Grab your Bible grab your notes so that you can write um, the things that I um, minister to you in today's service. And I would just want you to also share this link with a family friend, with somebody else there. Share the YouTube link, share the Facebook link. And while you're at it, you can also like our Facebook page. You can subscribe to our channel. We would love for you to constantly be informed when we are online so you can partake of what the Lord is doing in the house. I um, want to thank you, Pastor Dumi, for a powerful time even in prayer, even in um, the words that we have confessed this morning. We are indeed very, very glad for, for that. And while we are that, I just want to share something that we have started even this um, week, even in, our, in, our, in, our, um, in the church, which is our life groups. We have started our life groups for this year, and I'll just tell you a little bit more about our life groups. As you can see on the screen, we have our live groups happening on Sundays and Mondays. Sundays, we have groups that meet at 12 p.m., and another groups that meet at 6 p.m. And on Mondays, we have um, live groups happening at 8 p.m. For you to be able to join these live groups, you can just send a message to that number on the screen, plus 2781-4210835, and we will definitely get across to you. Let me just share a little bit about what the live groups are. I will just be on the screen shortly now, while the live groups um, information is still showing on the screen in the corner there. Um, our live groups are our Bible studies. There are times where we meet together to just um, go over the word. Bible talks about the Berean Christians. Um, and if you know about, let me just open the scripture for us. Acts 17, 11. Act, I'll just read it out. Acts 17, 11 says, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. 
what we do at our, at our live groups is to examine the word. Um, Pastor has been on a series every Sunday. He's teaching around God is good. He had several messages around that theme, God is good. And on from Mondays to Wednesdays, every Monday to Wednesday, there's another series, Understanding the Goodness of God. What we do at those live groups is to examine the word, is to be able to go over the word, ask questions. As you listen to the message, there's some thoughts that will come to you. There's some questions that will come to your mind. What we do at the, in these live groups is to break it down further so that we can have understanding, so that you can search the scriptures yourself and be able to see if it is actually true. Come to an understanding. This whole process of discipleship is about renewing our minds, getting the word of truth into our minds to change the things that maybe we had believed wrongly or to expand our understanding. And so our live groups are there for that purpose. So if you are watching and this is your first time and you're just thinking, okay, I want to be in a group where I can share the word, where I can, I, I can go over the word, I can have similar um, people of, 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 sim of, of, um, of the same mindset who will go over the word, teach me, I can ask questions, I can be free to ask questions. That's what our live groups are. And we want to encourage you, please, please, for even those who are members of the church who have not really plugged in into the live groups, this is an opportunity for you to plug into the live groups. Our first cycle for the year is going to run from February to April. So you have the opportunity to still join in. Um, get um, I mean the link, the number on the screen, plus 2781-4210835. Send us a message and we'll plug you into a, a group where you can receive the word, share the word, and get better understanding as we walk this journey of discipleship and walk this journey of renewing our minds. Thank you so much. And for today, we have... Um, a beautiful, beautiful message, as you have seen at the beginning of service, I, I titled it Around Honor. And all throughout the week, from last week, when Pastor talked about um, coming under the fivefold ministries, I had, a word had struck my heart all through the week. And that was in Malachi. It, this, it just came to me as a question, as it was in Malachi. Malachi 1 6. I just want to share that with every one of us. And it says, A son honors his father. And a servant his master. If then I be, I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? One of the things that we have talked about, or pastor has preached about, and, and is our theme for this year is a year of speed. And what I've decided is that everything that I need to do, change in my life, rearrange, sort out, that would help me key into this key word for this year, the year of speed, I am willing to do. So when this word came to my mind this whole week and was like, if I be your father, where is my honor? And I began to ask the Lord, whatever areas where I am not fully aligned. And one of the things I've also prayed is that I want to be aligned fully. Pastor has thought about it. The sun is constantly shining. God is constantly bringing forth his goodness. If I'm not receiving it, is that I'm not fully under the sun to receive it. So I've said that everything that I need to be able to be aligned appropriately, I am willing to learn, I'm willing to change, I'm willing to as uh, align myself. And so I want to encourage you even today as you listen to the word. As it, as it touches your heart and it ministers to you. Please align yourself. That's my own little exhortation for you this morning. Align yourself. We will just hear something about, we do have a um, ministry for our children. We will just get a little bit of where you can get the details for our um, children's ministry. Afterwards, we will worship the Lord. And after that, we will have our pastor, our spiritual father, come on and he will take us further in the service. Thank you so much. I believe you're going to have a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord today. Amen.
Good morning, church. Welcome to a beautiful Sunday morning. It's the first Sunday in the month of February, and we are grateful to God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his kindness, for his love. We have done January, and now we are in month two of the new year. God bless you. If you're first time uh, joining us for service this morning, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. Thank you for choosing to worship with us, for hanging out with us this morning. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. If you look on the 
on the live stream, if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, there's a link there. Um, click on that link uh, that says guest form and just fill out your details. We'll love to get to know who you are. We'll love to hang out with you. At the end of the service, uh, we are going to be meeting at, um, on Zoom for a meet and greet. Uh, the details of that will come uh, at the end of the service. Uh, we're going to be meeting an, at, at, on Zoom for meet and greet. So if this is your first time, please hang out with us, copy the Zoom details, and let's get to meet you at meet and greet after the service. It's going to be a powerful one this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to receive um, um, the offerings now. And then after that, we're going to take communion. Today is our communion Sunday. So I want you to get your things, your, your elements ready, the bread and the wine. Please get them ready. We are going to uh, share and partake of the Holy Communion this morning. But let's, let's, let me receive the offering and our giving for this morning. My, my scripture is taken from Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, there's something I see here that I want to point out. The Lord says, honor me with your substance. Honor me with your substance. It's not enough to honor the Lord with your words. Yes, your words should honor the Lord. Your heart should honor the Lord. Your, your prayers should honor the Lord. Your lifestyle should honor the Lord. But also, your money, your substance should honor the Lord. He says, honor the Lord with your possessions. You, you can't be a believer and you say that you are a follower of Jesus, that you love God, and your possessions are not loving God. No, your substance has to love God. Now, look at what he says. And with the first fruits of all your increase, all your increase, all, not some of your increase, not a few of your increase, all your increase. In other words, Every time increase comes into your life, every time income comes into your life, that's increase. God says, take out a portion and honor me. Take out first fruits. First fruits speaks of, of the tithe. Honor the Lord with the tithe. Hallelujah. In my church, in our church here, I say it all the time. Tithe is a matter of honor. If you don't want to do it, God will not kill you. <laughs> no devourer has a right to attack you if you don't tithe. Hallelujah. No devourer has a right. But, but it does something to you when you dishonor. Meaning that if you don't bring your tithe to the Lord, you don't honor him. You don't appreciate the fact that it's the him that gave you the grace to earn the money. So, so our tithe in this church is thanksgiving, is appreciation for what God has done. That's what we do. So we honor the Lord with our substance. Hallelujah. So this morning, with your tithe, with your offering, with your, with your um, seed to a man of God, all of that five dimensions of giving that I teach, it's for you to honor the Lord because you are obeying his word. Every time that, that we obey the word of God, we honor the Lord. So this morning, we want to obey the word of God with regards to giving. So we honor him with our substance. His word says we must do so. So we do so this morning. Hallelujah. And I want you to see the blessings. The reason why the Lord said for us to honor him with the tithe, with the first fruits. Why? Look, I say, so your bands will be filled with plenty. There's no way to have your bands filled with plenty without honor. Your bands cannot be filled with plenty without honoring the Lord with the substance. And say, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Overflow <laughs> is created, is provoked. Overflow is provoked with your giving, your tithe, your offering, the things you honor the Lord. Overflow is what is, is that's what provokes it. That's what causes it to happen. And I declare in the name of Jesus that you will have overflow in the month of February. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will have overflow. In the month of, of March, April, May, June, July, going all the way till the end of the year. Let's honor the Lord this morning with our substance. The banking details 
are coming up on the screen shortly. And, and uh, for those who are given by uh, electronic transfer, there's an APSA bank um, details there. That's where you give to. If you are you know, sending your offering by e-wallet or cash send or quick pay by Standard Bank, the, the cell phone number is plus 2764201545. Plus 2764201545. That's where we are given. And if you're making a transfer, those are the banking details. Let's honor the Lord. Let's, can you take that, your seed? If you have already done your tithe for the month of January, wonderful. If you are yet to do it, uh, you can go ahead and do it now. And, and let's honor the Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege of honoring you with our substance. To acknowledge your goodness. To acknowledge that you are the one who brings the income. You are the one who brings the supply. You are the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way. You are the one who has protected us and preserved us even in the midst of a pandemic. In the midst of a plague. Father, we are grateful. 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 We are saying thank you this morning uh, for what you have done for us. We honor you. In accordance with your word in Proverbs chapter 3 and, and verse 9 and 10, we honor you with, with the substance. We honor you with the tithe. And we therefore declare an overflow in the name of Jesus. We declare an overflow in the name of Jesus. Increase. We are filled with plenty. And our vats overflow with new wine. Thank you, Lord, because it is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to get into the communion in a moment. As is our custom in our church, we break bread and partake of the Lord's table um, every first Sunday of the month. That's when we do it as a church. But I, as I've often encouraged us, you need to do this at home. The Bible says, as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him. Uh, I want to read out a scripture uh, for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It says in verse 23, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-three, 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the lost debt till he returns. We want to proclaim the lost debt this morning. We want to declare the victory we have because the lost debt brought us victory over sin. The lost debt brought us victory over lack. The lost debt brought us victory over, over uh, Satan and all his cohorts. So we want to declare the lost debt this morning. That's what the communion is. And we do this together as a church once a month. So I want you to take out a piece of bread and some juice and gather your family and let's, let's partake of the lost table. Father, we thank you for your body that was broken. We thank you for your body that was broken for our healing. Thank you for your blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we receive now in the name of Jesus the blessings that you have released to us. We receive bodily healing. We receive bodily healing. Everywhere we ache, everywhere we, we ail, we receive healing now. And we thank you for your blood that was shed. Father, that blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. We receive the blessings of forgiveness. We receive the benefits. Even, even every single thing that your debt on the cross has secured for us, we appropriate them now. And we declare throughout the whole of the month of February, we manifest the fullness of the benefits of redemption in the name of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving our iniquities. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for delivering us from destruction. Thank you for renewing our youth, for satisfying our mouth with good things. Thank you, my Father. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may partake.
God bless you. All right. This morning, we have a guest minister. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, as, as, as I was praying about two weeks ago, the Lord spoke to me to bring this man of God and, and, and uh, bring a blessing from him to the church. So I sent him an invitation to, to bring the word of God to us. And this morning, he is bringing the word of God to us. He is a dear friend of mine. I met him when I first came to South Africa uh, 15, 16 years ago. And um, we've been friends since then. And he, he, God has used him to birth a very phenomenal church here in the city of Johannesburg. He's none other than the senior pastor of House of Treasures Ministries, Apostle Felix Oko. Please receive him with Jesus' joy this morning as we receive the word of God from his heart, from his spirit, and out of his mouth. God bless you. I'll be back when he's done uh, to round up the service. Uh, open your heart and receive the word of God as the man of God brings the word. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We honor you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for this opportunity, Father Lord, to share your word and to minister your word to God's people. We thank you, Father, for the privilege. And we ask, O oh God Almighty, for anointing, O oh God, to deliver this word with precision, with accuracy, with excellence, with boldness, with power, and with authority in the name of Jesus to the end that every believer shall be strengthened. Every believer shall be blessed. And we thank and honor you for what you will do in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's good to be here. I just first and foremost want to honor my friend and his dear wife, Pastor Chuk Sugohi and his wife, for having me here today. It's such a privilege to be with you all, and I'm so, so grateful. I believe that you know they've been doing a great work with with all of us teaching us the word of god and we've received from their ministry and we thank god for what god is using them to do and so today i have been invited to come and add to what they are doing and it's such an honor and a privilege well let's go right quick to the word of the lord the title of my message this morning is the law of honor the law of honor and i want to go quickly to two places in scripture I'll start first and foremost with the book of Genesis. Let's start from the book of the beginning. Genesis chapter 14. Genesis 14 and we will read from verse 11. Genesis 14 and from verse 11. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their visuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there came one that, es that had escaped and told Abraham, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamar, the, the Amorite, uh, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Abner, of Anna. And these were confederates with Abraham. Verse 14. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his house 318 18, and pursued them unto Dan. Verse 15, which is my emphasis. And he divided himself against them. He divided himself against them. And he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again Lot, his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. And the church of God say, Amen. All right. The book of First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, the Lord God of Israel saith, I indeed that, sorry, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me 
shall be lightly esteemed. Amen. All right. Um, I'm going to start from 1 Samuel chapter, the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. The Bible says that him that honor me, him will I also honor. And the one that despises me, I will lightly esteem. Now, church of God, today I'll be dealing with the law of honor. Honor is such an important thing in the life of every person, not just, not just believers. Honor. Honor is the key to access. I heard the man Mike Murdoch years ago say that honor is the key to access. Church of God, I've realized in my life, in my short life in ministry, that one of the greatest things that has opened doors for me in strange places, places I never ever imagined, was this law of honor. That any time honor is released to people, honor is released to, to you know, anyone, be it spiritual authority, be it, uh, you know, business partners, be it friends, be it your relatives. When honor is released, access is granted. Honor is the key to access. In fact, let me define honor. First and foremost, what is honor? Honor is, is the discerning. So, honor starts with discernment. Honor is the discerning of value. Honor is the discerning of worth. Honor is the discerning and the ability to know what somebody carries. And in the same manner, you now accord them the, the, the due uh, uh, benevolence or whatever is due to them. Honor is that which you see in a man and you are able to testify that there is a certain grace that this person carries that I really truly need in my life. I want what this person has. So honor is now giving, giving value to something that somebody else has that is unique. Something that is excellent, something that is unique from what you have, something that they carry that is of worth. That is giving honor. Now, uh, Church of God, uh, the Bible says here that God says, anyone that honors me. It's amazing to understand that a lot of people dishonor God. People in the house of God, I'm talking even about believers, dishonor God himself. They trivialize God, they look down on God. Who is God? What is God? The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And, and church of God, any time you dishonor God, you will pay for it. Any time you dishonor God, it will cost you. Now, church of God, the truth of the matter, the Bible says, I think it was Solomon that was preaching. He says, honor the Lord with your substance. Honor God. You must honor God. His, God says, if I be your father, where is my honor? If I be your father, where is my honor? If you trivialize God in your life, you will pay dearly for it. Church of God, you need to honor God. As a child of God, honor his word. Honor his word. God says, I honor my word above my name. If God honors his word above his name, you should honor his word. You cannot afford to dishonor God and dishonor his word in these last days. Church of God, the reason why so many believers are stranded is because they lack honor in their lives. We, have, we are living in a generation where honor is no longer a value and asset in the life of many people. There is too much dishonor. Dishonor of men of God. Today, anybody can rise up and write anything on social media about men of God. It's not supposed to be so. In those years, when God used to strike people dead, those, I mean, so many people would have been dead by now. These are, I mean, people just be, take what does not belong to them and begin to write about it. There are things that is above your pay grade. There are things that is above your jurisdiction. Writing about a man of God is not in your jurisdiction. The Bible says, who are you to judge another man's servant? For you are not his scholar. Let his scholar be the one to judge him. And so, Church of God, today, I really want to intensely speak to us about honor. Now, the second scripture that we read, the Bible talks about Abraham. At this point, uh, Lot and Abraham had separated. The Bible says at one time, Abraham's, uh, you know, Abraham's, uh, um, Abraham's headsmen and Lot's headsmen were working together, and there was strife between them. And because of that strife, it, it got so much intense that he began now to affect the relationship between Abraham and his uncle, uh, sorry, his nephew, Lot. 
And so the Bible says Abraham in wisdom came to Lot and said, Lord, the whole land is before us. Why don't you choose any part? If you choose the west, I will go, the, I will go, uh, I will go uh, east. If you choose north, I will go south. So the Bible says that in the process of time, Lot looked up or, you know, looked up and then he saw the plain of the, towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And he pitched his tent there and began to dwell in that plain. And the Bible says, then God now told Abraham, he says, look northward, southward, eastward, westward. He says, as far as your eyes can see, I have given it all to you. And so the Bible says now they separated. So at this point, Abraham had gone his way. Lot has gone into Sodom. And then all of a sudden, the, if you look at the first, uh, the first few chapters of uh, 14, first few verses of chapter 14, the Bible says five kings came against the king of Sodom and Gomorrah, came and made war against him. And the king of Sodom and Gomorrah had to escape for his life and ran into the mountains. And the Bible said these five kings came and took all that was in Sodom, all their goods, took the people, took Lot, Abraham's brother, took all he had, took everything, and they left. Now, fortunately for Lot, somebody escaped and came to tell Abraham that your, cousin, your nephew has just been taken. And the Bible said something that Abraham and... 318 servants born in his house. That is very strange. Born in his house. Now, I'm, I'm thinking at this point, Abraham doesn't have a son. Abraham doesn't have a child. So that means that these people's parents were serving Abraham and they had these children in Abraham's house. And the Bible said that Abraham armed these young men that were born in his house. And so the scripture says that after he armed them, they now went into battle against these five kings. Now, to my amazement, in this uh, uh, reading, verse 15 says, And he divided himself against them. He divided himself. Now, what does this, when I read the scripture early hours of this morning, it shook me. Because Abraham divided himself. He divided himself. He poured out himself. That means each one of those 318 servants were Abraham in person. My God. They were Abraham in person. They could confront what Abraham would confront. When Abraham divided them, he, each of them went and faced one direction. This group went that direction. And they all came back with the same results. They all came back and had the same result. They discomfited their enemies, brought back the goods, brought back the people, brought back everything that was taken by these five kings and defeated them. Church of God, let me say something to you. You know, it's unfortunate that we live in a generation where people no longer abide in the house. We live in a generation where people no longer stay enough to be equipped like these 318 servants born in abraham's house they no longer abide with their men of god today the average lifespan of any believer in a church is six months sometimes maximum a year that's the average lifespan of a christian in a particular church every christian you see today have attended almost 10 churches and that is something that has brought us in a place where we are untrained we become untrained we are not ready for battle you have not stayed long enough, honored your man of God enough to receive the grace upon his life. And church of God, this has brought reproach to the, to the gospel. I have sons and daughters that I've raised in the gospel. And a lot of them came, in fact, particularly there was one that came to me and said, you know, the Lord said uh, he has called me to start a church. Very, very intense meeting. And he says, God said, you should release me on the 1st of July. And you know, I came before the whole church and I told the church, he came to me and said, God said I should release him 1st of July. And that is what I'm doing. So we are releasing him based on what God said to him. And he went and started a church and not six months later, not even up to six months, he ran back to me and said, God did not say. Because he was uncooked. He was untrained. Church of God, these 318 servants, abided in the house until they became Abraham's. Abraham divided himself into them. When these people stood, Abraham was standing. Everything Abraham could achieve, they could achieve. 
the Bible said that they went out to this war. And this same 300, not military, oh God Almighty. Not, the, the Bible didn't mention that they had, they had AK-47 or bombs or grenade. The, in fact, it wasn't military training. It was, it was discipleship. I wish that we have sons and daughters in ministry, sons and daughters of God in the house of God that will honor their father long enough and stay long enough to receive the grace and the anointing upon their spiritual parents. Church of God, sonship is in the Bible. I know today there is a lot of Christians who say, I can never call any pastor my father. You are wrong, my dear, you are wrong. Apostle Paul never had a child. Apostle Paul was never married. He was writing to Timothy, he said to my son Timothy, this is the Paul you are reading his epistles still today. You are still reading his epistles. He wrote to Philemon, his son. He wrote to Onesimus, his son. So they are, they are, the sonship is in scriptures. Is in the scriptures. You, you, when you serve under a man of God, before you go to a man of God, believe, pray before God. Don't just go to any church because you feel like going to church. Pray. And say, Lord, is this where you have assigned me? Is this my spiritual authority? Is this my spiritual parents? Are these people that you have, you are, is, are these people the ones you have called to nurture me and to groom me in the faith? Church of God, let me tell you something. Only sons and daughters inherit. Only sons. Servants don't inherit. When you are a servant in the house, you don't inherit. Only sons inherit. And, and I want you today, if you are serving under this house, you are serving under this house, Pastor Chooks and his wife are your spiritual parents. And you need to honor them as such. They are your spiritual father and mother. It is God's order. That is the word of the Lord. When Elijah was about to depart, something strange happened. The Bible says that Elijah had sons in ministry called the sons of the prophet. And these people had followed Elijah for years. Um, they've been in his school. They've, they were taught, uh, nurtured and, and taught by him. But, you know, amazingly, when Elijah was going, these same sons of the prophet were the ones that were telling Elisha, do you know your master is going today? I mean, why? Because Elijah was, was, Elisha, well, Elisha was Elijah's son. The Bible said that when they had crossed Jordan, crossed, when they had crossed Jordan and then... At this point, the chariots, uh, the, the host of heaven came and caught him up. The Bible says his mantle, he caught the mantle and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. He cried out, My father, my father. And then when he got back to Jordan to prove that he had received the mantle of his father, he smoothed Jordan and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the, 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 the river Jordan parted. Church of God, you, you, for you to receive mantle, you need to be a son. You need to be a son to receive the mantle of your father. Church, we are living in the day where people have disvalued these things. We have reduced them, reduced the value. There is no more honor to our authority, spiritual authorities. There is no more honor to pastors. There is no more honor to men of God body of Christ, let me tell you something. Dishonor will shut doors against you. Dishonor will close opportunities against you. When you learn to honor, you will open, give yourself keys and access to greatness. Honor is the key to greatness. Honor is the access that gives you the key to greatness. If you keep dishonoring people, it will cost you. My brother, my sister, it will cost you. I have seen people in, their, in you know, a, a few of my friends who will look at me and despise what I'm doing. They despise it and the only thing they could have just done is honor the grace. Because every one of us is uniquely graced in different dimensions. Everyone. I am graced in a certain way. Pastor Chooks Ugohi is graced in a certain way. There are things he can do I can't do. There are things I can do he can do. And they, they, what God did in his kingdom, he put all of us together so we will now have the humility to go and learn from each other and tap into the grace that each of us carry. But what do we do in the body of Christ? We dishonor one another. Is he not Apostle Felix? What has he done that I can't do? And you see, that carelessness, you will pay for it with your life. 
you will pay for it struggling all your life in ministry. Am I talking to somebody? You look at your spiritual father and you say, you know what, is he not just, you know, uh, just pastor? So I used to attend a church where everybody was calling the men. They, some of them even used to call him by his name. I mean, this is long years ago. And I mean, I saw the level of dishonor. When I came into the ministry, I saw the level of dishonor. And unfortunately, the man of God went through a divorce. And every one of those people left him. They all left him. Why? Because there was no honor there. When you honor somebody as your spiritual father, no matter what happens to him, no matter what he does wrong, you will hang on to your father. There is no one of you that will disown your biological father because he's a drunkard. No. You still go, if they tell you that your father is drunk to a pub, in a pub, you go there and pick him up, clean him up, and dress him up, and make him go to bed and sleep. Why? Because he's your biological father. And so, Church of God, the Bible says that Abraham had 318 servants that were born in his own house. And, and you know, thank God that these 318 servants stayed long enough to be trained. How many people stay long enough to be trained? Today, people zoom off and say, you know, God has called them to start churches. God has called them to start business. God has called them to resign from their jobs. God has, and, and you ask them a few questions and they cannot answer. You know, don't let dishonor bring you to your knees. Don't let dishonor bring you from the top to the bottom. You need to learn to honor whoever God has placed around you. There are graces all around you that you need. Church of God, listen to me. There are graces all around you that you need. I am privileged any time I find grace, I always go and seek after it. A day came when me and my wife and my children decided we are flying to Houston. And we flew to Houston. All we went there to do was to go and visit Lakewood Church. We got to Lakewood Church. I sat down. I looked around. I looked at the crowd. I looked at everything. I mean the excellence, the opulence. The, the, the unity, the love, the, 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 oh my God, everything was on point. I mean, these people could disperse 30,000 people in less than 10 minutes. No, there is something they know I don't know. And so we went there, we sat down, and I learned. I went with my cameraman, and we were all looking around. And you know, today I've heard a lot of people talking against this man. People say he's just a motivational speaker. Some people say he doesn't know the Bible. But listen, my dear, the man has done something I haven't done. I heard the man of God, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, years ago. He said, never criticize a man you have not done five times more than what he has done. If you have not done more than five times what a man has done, never criticize the person. You need to go and learn from the person. That is honor. Honor says I have the flexibility of heart enough to humble myself and say, I don't know it all. I don't know it all. I can't do this. I haven't done this. I haven't achieved this. Let me go and learn from somebody. Amen, somebody. Let me go and learn. When we were building our building, I went to men of God who were in construction. And I went to ask them questions. What they are going through, the challenges. I gave them seed. I remember the first set of offering that we collected for our building was 180000 it was in the I we opened an account called I fund account for the, our building project that was going to cost us 16 million and the lord said to us build this building one year debt free and i mean as at the second month we had only collected 180000 i went to three men of god that were in building projects i first went to their building projects to see if they were building and i called them individually and met with them and gave divided that first offering that we had received divided it among the three churches it was honor it was a seed of honor to let them know that what you are doing i want it i want it and i you know it, it's it's interesting you know what i'm about to say do you know that one of the men of god we went to see to give that check till today our building has been finished six years ago till today his building is not finished because you see he has to do the same level of honor that I did. Church of God, sometimes, you, you know, never criticize a man you don't know his seed. Never, ever criticize a man you don't know his seed. The seed of honor is a powerful seed. 
And I, I wish the body of Christ can learn this so that we can stop judging each other. Let me tell you something, church. You might be a businessman. You might be a housewife. You might be a single woman. I mean, if you find a man who's a businessman, he may be 30 years old, you 40 years, and this man has built a business that is now having branches all over and have staff of over two, 300 people, and you are 40, and you have not been able to raise your business to have five employees. You need to humble yourself and honor that person that has built that so that you will receive the same grace. Church of God, the body of Christ is struggling today because of dishonor. God says, if you dishonor me, I will likely esteem you. I will likely esteem you. How does, how do you, does a man get to a point where you dishonor God? When you don't obey his word. When you disregard God's word. A man of God will preach to you, minister the word of God to you, and when you get home, you say, I ah, don't mind him. He's just talking his own thing. No, I'm not going to do what he's saying. Church of God is dishonor. How are you honoring God? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. It says, honor the Lord with your capital. Are you honoring God with your tithes? There's a lot of people today who are not tithing. God's people who says tithe is now Old Testament. But beloved, the Bible says that Jesus was made was made a, a, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. What is, when something is made after an order, let me explain what that means. Um, I'm going to use, uh, for instance, there's a church called uh, Winner's Chapel, um, pastored by Bishop David Oyedepo. And every Winner's Chapel you go, almost has the same, especially if they build the building themselves, they build it according to the pattern or the order of their headquarters. Now, even banks, when you go to FMB, all the branches are built in the same order. Now, the Bible says that Jesus was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now, who is Melchizedek? In the scripture we just read in Genesis chapter 14, the Bible says that as Abraham was coming back to this, from this war of kings, where he defeated uh, five kings and their whole entire nation with, with his 318 born servants on his way back as the king of Sodom was on his way to go and look for Abraham he met a man called Melchizedek who the Bible says has no beginning no end and the Bible talks about this man met Abraham and blessed Abraham and Abraham gave him the tent of all and then the scripture says he then blessed Abraham now church of God uh, let me tell you something at, the, at this point, Moses is not in view. If you are still talking about law and grace, Moses was not in view at all. To prove to you that Titan is an ordinance in the scripture that God approved from the beginning. In talking about the law of first mention, if you joke with your Titan, you will struggle. You will struggle. I have said it. Look, in our church, I was telling them last year, the largest singular tithe in our ministry last year, 2020, was paid by me and my wife. The largest singular tithe paid by one person at one time was paid by me and my wife. Because we honor God with our capital. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. How are you honoring God? Are you just honoring him with your lips? Are you just honoring him with, you know, with going to church? No, honor the Lord. Go beyond that. Honor him with your substance. The Bible says Melchizedek gave him bread and wine, which is a symbol of the Holy Communion. Gave him bread and wine. And the same thing that Jesus did to his disciples. The Bible says on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, broke it and gave it to them and said, take it, this is my body which was broken for you. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And the Bible says in the same manner he took the cup and after he has sobbed, he said, take, this is the new cup of the New Testament in my blood. He says, as often as you drink, drink in remembrance of me. For in doing this, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Church of God, let me tell you something. The way you honor God will determine how far you go in life. The level of honor you give to God. The level of honor you give to his servants. The Bible says no man take this honor to himself except the man that is called. If God has called you under this ministry to serve under Pastor Chooks and his wife, I beg you in the name of the Lord, give them the honor that is due to them. Give them the honor. 
you are watching me and you belong to another ministry honor the man of god i remember one day a man of god drove into our church and um you know this man of god white brother pastors a church around uh, where our ministry is and he came to me and he says you know man of god i was going through all your facebook messages for your birthday because he wished me a uh, happy birthday so i think in the process of writing birthday message for me he decided to go through my wall and he saw people daddy you know my father, spiritual father you know and all the honor the flyers everything that was done and he came to me and he says man of god i want to ask you something how did you get the church to honor you as a spiritual father and i said i taught them i taught from the word of god just like as i'm teaching today so that if you receive this listen to me it is so easy for you to duplicate duplicate the grace of your men of god by honor honor your servant of god honor them honor them how do you honor them you serve them you listen to me if your pastor tells you to do something twice, that is dishonor. The first time he said it, you should have done it immediately. If your pastor has to tell you, your spiritual father has to tell you to do something two times, he told you the first time and then you didn't do it, he tells you the second time, that is dishonor. That is now going to the level of dishonor. Church of God, we must learn to honor. Honor is the key to access. Anytime you honor people, they give you access to themselves. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. I remember one day, uh, the man, Petrus Motepe, came to our church. He came for service. And, you know, after service, I, I went to him. And, I mean, he, he, was, he didn't even come. He didn't want to even see who is the pastor. He, he just came to church. So I ran. One of my protocol went and met him by his car and said, Please, our spiritual father would like to meet you. So... I went to his car. I didn't say he should come to my office. I went straight to his car. I said, sir, I saw you in the service. I truly honor you. And I remember him putting his hand on my shoulders and saying, you have done a great work here. Thank God for what you are doing. God is using you to do. And you know, he said to me, you know, um, this is my personal number. Not everybody has this number. I remember him telling me, my best friend is a Nigerian. And he mentioned his name. He's the richest man. His name is Dangote in Nigeria. He said, I, in last Christmas, I was at his house I, with my children, my wife and my kids. We spent five nights in his house, or the whole Christmas and New Year period in his house. And, you know, and we, we spoke, and I said to him, you know, it's such a great honor for me to meet you. I didn't sit in my office and say, you know, I'm the man of God. I'm, no, this is a man that has built conglomerates. This is a man that... I mean, during this time of COVID, he gave one billion rand to the government for COVID relief. I mean, Church of God, you can't see such a person and dishonor them and say, I'm too anointed. No, he should come to me. No. Church of God, first and foremost, he's older than me by age. So it's important for you to understand the place of honor. If you dishonor people, you will pay for it. Let me say that again. If you dishonor people, it will cost you. Honor is the key to access. Anytime you show honor, people will give you access. People will always give you access. I remember somebody coming to my office, and um, this young man came to invite me for, to come and minister for him. And when he came, he dropped an offering and, you know, knelt down and asked me to pray for him and says, you know, man of God, I've been watching you. I've heard your messages. I've, I've been so blessed by your ministry. I, it would be such a great honor for you, for us to have you in our ministry. Man, I couldn't say no. Even though my schedule was so tight, I couldn't say no to that young man. I couldn't. Why? Because he came with honor. Church of God, honor opens doors. If you dishonor your man of God, you shut the door to the grace of God upon his life. He can minister from this altar. Yeah, even though the word is ministering, is blessing other people, you won't be blessed because you close the access, you close the gate through your dishonor. It is high time that you begin to honor the man and the woman of God that God has set over you. They are your spiritual parents. The Bible says, beloved, honor your parents in the Lord, that it may be well with you and that your days will be long. The reason for this or, or timely death in our generation is the dishonor that men have given to their parents, both spiritual and biological. In Church of God, we must change that. 
Here is this 318 young men born in Abraham's house. They stayed. They honored Abraham to the point. I mean, you just tell them we are going to war. We are going to fight five kings. These men didn't say, I'm not going. Why should I go? What if I die? They didn't question Abraham immediately. True honor, they went with him. The Bible says Abraham divided himself. He divided himself. That means that these men have become Abraham. They have taken the anointing, the grace. Everything that made Abraham, Abraham was in them. To prove that, they all went, as they went into this battle, they won the battle, came back with the people, the spoils, and everything that the five kings took and defeated the five kings. Church of God, you need to come back to the place of honor. In this year, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me, which I, I taught in our church uh, on 31st night, he said to me, son, um, I want you to speak to my people regarding men and women of God. He says, a whole lot of the things that I'm going to do this year, I'm going to do through my servants. I'm going to do them through my servants. Even though my people have a relationship with me, I'm going to do them through my servants. The Bible says, for by a prophet, Israel was brought out of Egypt. And by a prophet was she preserved. Now, hear me and hear me well. You might be listening to me and you say, okay, but I'm a son of God. I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I will tell you something. There are some things that God will use his servant to do in your life. You can pray from now till tomorrow. You can pray from now till your eyes are blue. Until your servant of God, authentic. In fact, as a matter of fact, let me say this. The, the way your servant of God prays for you or says about you, we determine what God does for you. It's, a, it's interesting. I'm telling you, if you are the kind of person that your pastor will come and say, Ish, man, this young man, oh my God, this young man. God is listening to those conversations, those words he's speaking. And through that, the law of dishonor has shut your doors. But you see, if you're the kind of person that your servant of God, your man of God, when he thinks of you, he says, Father, bless this young man. Bless him. God has seen that you have honored your man of God and he will in turn bless you. That's what you must consistently do in your life. Place honor, place value on your man of God. Place value. Church, we are living in a time, and the Lord said clearly to me, he said, teach my people that they should honor their servants and their men of God. Honor your servant of God. Honor your men of God. Because, let me tell you something, the days that we are in are evil. You need covering. You need the covering of your men of God. You need the covering of your servant of God. You need their prayers. You need them to declare words over you. I've had people in our church who have believed God for certain things, and the day they walk into my office, I just declare a word and it was done. It was just done. Everything changed. Church of God, just by the words in my mouth. Because God has put his words in my mouth for them. He's put his words in my mouth. And church of God, you must understand this. So if you don't honor your men and women of God, there are certain dimensions that you have cut yourself off from. Your spiritual parents are good people. They love God. They serve God. They, they pursue God. They do everything in their power to make sure that all is well with you. They pray for you. I know times that I've spoken to Pastor Chooks and he would tell me, man of God, I just finished prayer. I decided let me just take a little rest. I mean, who is he praying for? He probably not his own needs, but your needs. And so you must accord them the level of honor that is due to them. As your spiritual parents, as men and women that God has called as your covering. Church of God, we are living in those days that if you are the type that dishonor men and women of God, certain dimensions will never come to you. Certain, you will not attain certain dimensions in the spirit. And this is the gospel truth. I know this doesn't sound like a New Testament preaching, but I am telling you by revelation what the Lord spoke to me, that a lot of his people have despised his servants because of some other people who are the bad eggs who have come into ministry, done things wrong. Listen to me. The fact that there is a fake 100 rand note doesn't mean that all the 100 rand notes in South Africa are fake. No. They are still genuine men of God. They are still genuine women of God. And I know that your servant of God, Pastor Chooks and his wife, are genuine. Called by God, anointed by God, graced by God to pastor you. And so you should honor them as such. 
And so, Church of God, today, I am only appealing to you that you begin to release the seed of honor. It is that seed that will bring you to greatness. It is the seed of honor. Anytime you dishonor, it will cost you. Anytime you honor, it brings value and gives you access. I can, it's just that time will fail me to share testimonies of my, my life in particular, of honor that I've given to men and women of God. I have given honor, great honor. I gave a seed to my father, my biological father, recently. This is not long ago. I sent my father this, this seed. My father, when he received it, he gave me a call. He said this word, my son, Felix, if you work, they will bless you. If you don't work, they will bless you. He said, if you work, they will pay you. If you don't work, they will pay you. I mean, I've never heard that prayer from any prophet. But that was a prayer that came from the bowels of an 84-year-old man. And I tell you, it has worked wonders in my life. Church of God, honor is the key to access. I want you to make sure that you honor those who God has placed over you, your spiritual authority. Honor your brothers in the Lord. Honor your friends. Honor business partners. Honor men and women who have achieved and done things you have not done. Honor them so that that same access that they have to the grace that gave them what they have will also come to you. The moment you honor them, that door of access just opens to you. They don't even have to see it. It just opens to you because it's a law in the realm of the spirit. Church of God, I hope you have received these words. I, I, I pray that God will give me the privilege to come back to you again and finish up with this message. But I really, I really truly hope you have been blessed. Make sure that you learn to sow the seed of honor. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for everyone at the sound of my voice. Thank you, Father, Lord, for what we have received today. My prayer, Father, is that you release grace upon each and every one. Lord God of heaven, the grace that will help them, that will make their hearts so malleable that they will be able to give the seed of honor in every area of their lives. Father, help us, O oh God Almighty, to be, to be able to honor those you have placed around us. For the giftings and potentials that you have placed around us, help us to honor them. Give honor that will give us access to the same level of grace. We thank and honor you, Father. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. And I want to say a big thank you again to my dear friend and my brother, Pastor Chooks, who go here and his beloved wife, uh, Pastor Tony, for having me on their pulpit and on, on you know, uh, being a blessing to God's people. I truly love you. I truly celebrate you. And I truly honor you. God bless you. Amen. What a word. Praise the Lord. Apostle Felix, thank you so much for sharing God's heart to bring a current now word uh, to the church this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I think this one deserves uh, for you to come and finish it. I can see you didn't finish or you would have to come and finish it. But thank you so much. We, 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 let, church, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for that word that you brought to us through your servant this morning, Apostle Felix Oko. We are grateful for it. We are so grateful. Father, we thank you that our hearts will receive that word and we will be doers of the word. We will be doers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church, we have heard the word. We are going to go and do. Amen. Help me tell the person next to you, we are going to go and do the word. The blessings, the Bible says the blessing is in the doing of the word. Not in the hearing of the word, but in the doing of the word. We will do what the word of God has said, and we expect the blessing to overflow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, thank you for being part of the service this morning. Um, as I said earlier on, we are going to have a meet and greet after the service. So if today is your first time, we'd like to know who you are. So the details of the meet and greet is going to be a Zoom link. So, so the details are coming up on the screen just now. And then you log in there and you're going to find the whole church um, waiting. And we are just going to hang out there. It's not more than five minutes. Just to say hello to everyone and touch base with everyone. And then we disperse and enjoy the rest of Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us for service this morning. Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of this house, let's see each other at meet and greet and enjoy the blessing of the Lord for the rest of Sunday. God bless you.
I'll see you just now at meet and greet.